So somebody posted a question about how do you export from Modo to the various game engines. You know, and obviously we use the FBX file format, but there's a lot of little gotchas and settings and things that I kind of take for granted uh, within Modo, but it's definitely worth walking through there. So I'll show you the settings I use, uh, why I use them, and I'll explain some, some tips and tricks along the way to help you or to make your life a little more uh, efficient. So we'll just jump into Modo and have a look. So here we are inside of Modo, and the first step in this journey is going to be sure you have is going to be to make sure you've got your preferences all set up correctly for FBX uh, file I/O. So you just go in the preferences dialog, scroll down to your FBX I/O settings, and you'll see these options here. Now I'm going to flip over to Photoshop real quick just so it's easier to read. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so uh, the important settings. Or, or the ones that really matter, are that I usually set the, ex, uh, the export version to 2013. Uh, this used to be weird with earlier versions of Unreal Engine 4, but it all seems fine now. So just use the latest setting. Uh, export type. Uh, this one's pretty important. Well, it's not, imp I mean, it's not critical, but it helps with a lot of things. This export selection with hierarchy means that the mesh item you have selected and all of its children are going to be exported to the same FBX file. And that comes in handy for a few things that we'll see in a little bit. Uh, obviously save geometry, because what's the point otherwise? Save mesh smoothness uh, is a big one. Uh, what I actually have discovered uh, through experience is that you don't have to have save smoothing groups turned on. Uh, I thought you did for the longest time, because when you import the mesh uh, in Unreal Engine 4, uh, you'll get an error message saying, oh, there's no smoothing on the mesh. But there is because you saved the mesh smoothness. <laughs> so uh, despite the fact that it gives you an error, your mesh uh, is smoothed correctly and it does have all the vertices welded. So I just wouldn't even worry about this. Now, I'm a huge fan of not turning on stuff that we don't need to have turned on. It just uh, minimizes troubleshooting variables, basically. Well, and the last option is save materials. Uh, what that means to you is that if you have a mesh, you know, say a glass shield and a metal backing and a plastic base or something, and those are all separate texture sheets, uh, when you export the FBX or import the FBX uh, into Unreal Engine, having that checked means that uh, it'll come in with separate sections you can throw uh, the, you know, the different materials onto. With that unchecked, it all gets grouped into one big texture block, uh, you know, which is not what you want. So those three flags are the important ones, and the rest you can leave off as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's about it for FBX options. Um, let's talk about uh, the pivot next. Okay, so the pivot. Uh, this is the uh, the origin of your mesh when you pull it into your game engine. And uh, it, you know, it used to be in days gone past that you know, when you exported a mesh, uh, the center of the world would become your origin. So no matter where your mesh was uh, you know, in the modeling app, the origin was always your pivot. And this led to people having to write scripts that would you know, move meshes to the middle of the world, then export, then move them back out where they were, and it was just a big hassle. The uh, FBX exporter, in Modo at least, uh, I can't speak for other applications, but in Modo, uh, wherever you put the center of the mesh, that becomes your pivot. So you can have meshes scattered uh, to the four winds all through your workspace, and they will all export with the correct pivot you know, as long as you set it. Now there's a terminology thing here that we're gonna have to get past. Now, inside of Modo, there's two things. There's a there's a thing called a pivot and there's a thing called a center. And unfortunately, it's the center that gets exported as your pivot. I apologize. <laughs> it's not my fault. Um, so uh, all you have to remember is to ignore the pivot when you're inside a model and just work with the center. Now up in the menu here, you can pull this down and say you have pivot mode and center mode. 
skip pivot mode and go right to center, which is also hotkey number seven. Okay, so when I do that, uh, now you can see this white dot appears in the world with you know the axis on it. That's your pivot. Um, that's where that's where your pivot will be when you pull it uh, you know, um, into a game engine. You know, and to move it, you just select it and just move it to wherever you need to move it to. You know, down here or whatever, right? You want to move it to say that vertex. We'll set up vertex snapping. Grab it. What? Yeah. What is it with software that makes you look like an idiot as soon as you turn on the video camera? But anyway, yes, so, so now that center sits down there in that corner. And when I export the mesh to UE4, that's where the origin will be. Uh, and that's it. So if you've worked with the Unreal Engine for any length of time, uh, you know that when you export your mesh to the, uh, to the game engine, uh, you have to include some additional mesh items with UCX prefixes on them. And those become the collision for your mesh uh, once you're inside of Unreal Engine. So to make my life easier, uh, what I'll do is I'll create those collision meshes uh, and then drag them to the main mesh item as children. So you can see over here I've got these two UCX meshes that represent the rough collision for this uh, main mesh. So I can turn off the visibility on those and collapse the tree. Now thinking back to the options screen, uh, we set the export type to selection with hierarchy. And what that means is that whenever I export that cube, uh, it's also going to export all the children. And that just adds a layer of convenience to my day because it means that I can never forget to export the collision. So I can never check in a buggy mesh you know, that doesn't have collision and I won't get a bug report about it. And it's a minor thing, true, but you know, I'll take whatever convenience I can get during the workday. So to finish this up, uh, I wanted to include a couple of gotchas in here that I've learned through hard experience. And hopefully you can avoid the same pain that I had to go through. So uh, we have to backpedal just a little bit to get some history in here. Um, so Moto, up, up through till about uh, I think 801, uh, there was no way to export just the selected items from the tree. It was the whole scene or nothing. So people wrote scripts that would allow you to do that. You can make a custom script and fire it off and just export your selected items. And what these usually did was they would copy the selected items to a new scene, uh, export that entire scene, uh, then close that scene, you know, you know all kind of automatically. And uh, the reason I bring that up is because that's kind of still how it works in certain situations. So um, uh, when I right click this cube over here and I tell it, you know, export selected layers, uh, this menu item, which is super great that it's there, but it's basically doing what I just described, which works, but it has the unfortunate drawback of it will flush your undo buffer. So once you use that, you can't undo. Uh, you know, which can get annoying at times. You're suddenly like, why can't I undo? Oh, right, I exported. So the way to fix that is again, ha having that wonderful uh, option set in the options screen where you can se uh, export selection with hierarchy. Just make sure what you want to have selected uh, is selected. Then go to the file menu and use the export as option over here. Now, not every file format supports um, only exporting your selection. Like I know FBX does, but OBJ does not. Uh, to export OBJs, you have to right click over there and do the, uh, the scripted version of the exporting. So you know, it's a minor inconvenience, but I find, you know, and you can see I've hooked up control alt E over here to this export. So as soon as I'm ready to export, I just select the things I want, and I hit Control alt e and fire out the FBX. So uh, just be aware of those differences because uh, that will bite you. So to wrap this up, uh, we'll talk about a few more gotchas. Uh, one of the big ones that can get you is that when you export your mesh uh, and your collision items, 
you need to make sure they all have the same center because if not when you get it uh, into the game engine you're going to have your mesh here and your collision is going to be offset a little bit or it's going to be off somewhere weird and you're going to be tearing your hair out trying to figure out why well it's because uh, inside of moto their centers aren't in the same spot so make sure you check that uh, one other thing that can really get you is let's say you've nested uh, all of your meshes inside of a grouping item or inside of another mesh item even and that mesh item has transform uh, information on it like scaling information or, or some kind of a rotation uh, keyframe or something on it uh, that'll mess with you all day long so and it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video to talk about how to go about finding that and correcting it but uh, one easy fix for that kind of thing is just to go into your mesh item and select all the polygons, do a cut, make a new mesh item somewhere else in the scene, paste it, and export from there because that will remove all the transform keys and whatever else is going on to make your mesh sad. Um, I think that about covers the basics of it. Now, uh, if I missed something, let me know in the comments and hit like if you found this useful. Thanks. Um, I guess I forgot to mention Unity. And I probably should since it has slash unity down there in the title. But there's really not much to say. I mean, all the information that I laid out here uh, applies to unity equally. Uh, with the exception of the UCX stuff uh, and the collision primitives. But, you know, the nesting hierarchy and all that, uh, that all applies. So whatever you saw here for UE4, just apply it and use it in unity. Thank you.